Good evening, everyone. We'll go ahead and get started singing. We turn to Old for a Breeze of Heavenly Love. It's uh, 213. And I think it's 455 in the 12th edition. Is that right, Lord? 455. Two thirteen and four fifty five. Oh, for a breeze of heavenly love, to my soul away, to my world above, where my chance stay. Sing uh, better father on is 215 and 209 in the 12th edition. 215 and 209. <clears throat>
sing Ye Little Flock. It's 216 and um, 210 in the 12th edition. It's the next selection. <clears throat> Ye little flock whom Jesus leaves, dismiss your anxious cares. Look to the shepherds of your souls and smile away your fears. request for come let us praise the Lord it's number 11 in the 12th edition <clears throat> number 11 in the 12th edition come let us praise the Lord Our Savior, Bill. 
this thing number four. It's number four in both editions. <clears throat> number four. Thank you, Brother Kevin. Oh, good evening, everyone. Uh, good to uh, see many of your faces and uh, see by name who's joining us this evening. <clears throat> We're thankful for our song service that we've been able to uh, sing together, uh, giving praise to the Lord. Uh, we're thankful uh, for the presence of each one of you here this evening. We hope and trust that everyone has, has prayed and will continue to pray. As we meet together this evening, uh, we're thankful. We're thankful to God and for all the goodness that he's uh, shown us uh, this day and every day of our life. Um, you know, the first chapter, you know, the Bible begins off with in the beginning God. And we know that it has been in the beginning God and uh, it shall be in all eternity God. Um, we know that uh, we have a God that is a uh, the massive creator. And yet uh, we read in the New Testament that that God stood still uh, and ministered to his disciples. Uh, he stood still on the cross of Calvary uh, for us, dying in our stead, uh, that we would have an everlasting home with our everlasting father. We can definitely say the Lord has been good to me. Um, so good evening, everyone. We're thankful for this opportunity. Uh, we're thankful for the knowledge that we have of our great God. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, 
Brother Oots with us tonight. It's good to see him. Certainly are thankful that uh, he's doing all right and able to be with us tonight. We, <coughs> excuse me. We have several that we'd like to call out as we go to the Lord in prayer this evening. <clears throat> Continue to uh, remember Brother Gene and Sister Wanda, Sister Virginia, Sister Ruth, her brother Robert. Uh, we pray the Lord's continued blessing upon them. Uh, Brother Ned, we uh, continue to be in prayer for him. Um, Brother uh, Jerry Van Hoy and Brother Billy Carlock, we ask the Lord's continued blessing upon them. Um, Sister Mary Catherine, Sister Bennett, uh, Sister Merlin, Brother Jonathan, the Duns and the Eatons, we ask the Lord's uh, continued blessing upon them. Brother Phil Schaub, we ask the Lord's continued blessing. Uh, we'd ask that the uh, Lord would remember a, a co-worker, her family, uh, and a Bradshaw works with me there to school. Her son, 35 years old, passed away. Uh, we ask the Lord's uh, blessing, uh, comforting power with that family. So uh, Justin, my son-in-law, got a cousin that, uh, was up, lives in Buffalo, and um, there was a firefighter uh, that died, and Justin's cousin was on the scene and not harmed, uh, but there was a firefighter that uh, died in an explosion in that building. Uh, we asked the Lord's blessing upon that family and all those firefighters involved. <clears throat> Pray the Lord's continued mercy upon this country in which we live. Uh, we pray for the military. We ask the Lord to watch care over them, our law enforcement, firefighters, other first responders, just asking the Lord uh, to watch over them and take care. Let them feel thy presence with them. And that he would comfort them in any uh, tragic accident that would occur. Well, Brother Gary, do you have anyone you'd like to call out? Sister Judy Gray is on uh, is called in tonight. She she asked if uh, if you'd remember her in your prayers. She just said she felt especially the need of those that she loved, and she said she felt like she loved you all. So she wanted to ask you to please pray for her. Uh, she's there in the nursing home. Um, so uh, I really would appreciate that. So we want to remember Sister Judy Gray. Uh, is there anyone else we'd like to call out? Yeah, uh, Brother Eddie, uh, my aunt, uh, her, June Evans, is uh, under hospice care right now in the uh, 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 think anything she's uh, in bad shape i've been to see her this evening joanne and i she's joanne's sister my aunt joanne comes on here some uh joanne and i went to see her today and she's in really bad shape and uh, uh don't look forward to live more than two or three days probably yeah. but keep keep the keep her in prayers i'm asking the lord to take her and get her out of that pain she's in awful pain and uh, remember the family, for all the nephews, nieces, and so on. Her husband's been gone now for about five years, so 91 years old. She's been blessed to live a long life. Just uh, appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Brother Don. We'll remember your aunt. Uh, hospice care, uh, very low. We ask the Lord's mercy uh, and grace, and certainly his compassion and comfort upon all those that know her and are dear to her. Is there anyone else we'd like to call out? All right, no one else being uh, mentioned. We'd like to have a hymn as a way of opening. We'll ask Elder Roos if he'd preach for us tonight. Uh, we'll ask Brother Gene if he'd have uh, opening prayer for us following this uh, hymn. Uh, Brother Kevin, what number do you have?
Can't hear you, brother Kevin. Five thirty-seven and five eighty. Can you hear me now, brother Eddie? Okay. Five thirty-seven and five eighty. To thy temple we bring it Brother Kevin, pray the Lord's blessing upon you in prayer, Brother Gene. It's good to see you tonight. Did he get disconnected? I think he accidentally turned his video off. Grandpa, are you there? I'm sorry, I, I did. I turned the video off. Bow with us. Our most gracious and eternal Heavenly Father. We come before thee tonight, confessing our sins, realizing, Lord, that our sins are the spiritual remains. We thank thee, Lord, for shedding thy blood upon the owner of the cross and paying the sin debt for all that the Father gave thee before the foundation of the world. We ask thee, Lord, to be with our service tonight, be with each one that's assembled here, that we might feel thy presence, 
pray especially for Brother Gary as he speaks to thy own children. Bless him, Lord, with the spirit of his calling that he might be able to proclaim those things that would be pleasing to thee and edifying to thy own children. Lord, there's been many called out here tonight that stands in need of prayer. We pray for all those, Lord, that are sick and on the beds of affliction in the nursing homes and the hospitals, wherever they might be. Continue to be with us throughout the rest of this week. We pray, Lord, for those in authority over this Lord, that they might make decisions that would be beneficial to thy own children. Our nation, Lord, has gone astray, and we often wonder how long before the chastisement of thy hand comes upon thy little children. But we pray, Lord, that there will be enough people worshiping thee and praising thee that thou wilt spare our nation. We pray for revival, Lord, that we might Turn to thee and give thee the honor and the praise and the glory that's due thy great and holy name. Continue to be with us throughout the rest of this service. In Jesus' blessed and holy name, we ask it all. Amen. Thank you, Brother Gene. <clears throat> Certainly appreciate that prayer. Mildred, we'll continue to pray for you. It's good to have you with us. We just pray the Lord's blessing upon you. Appreciate that so much, Brother Eddie. Um, just a blessing again to be here on another Wednesday night meeting. Enjoyed the wonderful singing and thank the Lord for that. Uh, appreciate that sweet and humble prayer that's been offered by Brother Gene and just can't thank the Lord enough for giving me a want to and a desire to be here and the ability to gather tonight one more time with a portion of the Lord's people. Um, please pray for me as we make an effort to speak. i um, got some thoughts on my mind tonight. I hope and trust they're of the Lord and they've been sweet in my thoughts this week. Some good things that I've been able to think about. It seems like the Lord's uh, been with me in, uh, in that. Uh, regard it's wonderful to feel his presence throughout the week feel the lord with you when you're looking at the scripture and you're seeking to know and learn and grow in his grace we also know that if we have that desire that's come to us not because we decided to have it or we made our mind up to have that but it comes by the grace of god as well uh, if we and I've found in my efforts at times, sometimes some of the sweetest weeks of study have grown, have not brought out about a good time in, in an effort to share that with the Lord's people. Um, though I've enjoyed the week of study, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, uh, it doesn't guarantee in any means whatsoever that we'll have what we need tonight to feed th feed this little congregation. So please pray that the Lord would manifest his presence tonight with us so that we would follow the leadership of the Spirit and that the Lord's Spirit would be with us, that we would feel him, and we would grow in grace and knowledge of the truth. It's a wonderful thing when the Lord manifests his presence in a worship service. Uh, we often sing in our part of the country, you know, about the parting hand and how we hate to take the parting hand, and I've had been some meetings that were just so good, I hated to think about leaving, and I hated to think about going back back out into the world, but, um, and I'm so thankful that we have felt that, um, but tonight's another night, and I pray that we'll feel that tonight, that we'll feel the Lord's presence, that he'll be with us, so 
just please pray for me. I have a very familiar passage on my mind tonight, and I pray the Lord will just bless us as we look at it together. Uh, it's the 23rd division of the Psalm, Psalm 23. Uh, if you have your Bibles, like to turn with me. I know many of you probably could quote this, and uh, that's a good thing. Uh, I wish I had more um, scriptures uh, in my memory and in my mind and thoughts. Um, but I'm just thankful for what the Lord has given us in his word. Psalm 23, there are six verses here. We'll begin reading right at verse one. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And just reading that tonight makes me feel better to think about a God who's so great and so wonderful and so powerful. That is the God, as Brother Eddie has already said from Genesis, the God, the Lord. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. We've got a creating God, a God who is powerful, a God who is mighty, a God who is indeed the Lord. Over in uh, the psalmist, we read in Psalm 145, I believe it is, in verse 3. It says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is past. Let me get that. I, as much as I've been trying to get that in my memory, Brother Eddie, I still would rather just, just look at it. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. So when we start talking about the greatness of the Lord tonight, and we start talking about how great he is, we really come around to what, just what the, the hymn writer wrote when he, he wrote that hymn in our books, how great they are. We can't, we can't begin to describe the greatness of the Lord. But when we think about him being our shepherd, what a blessing it is to think about what a great God it is that we have as our shepherd. He's the Lord. And all of the things that are going on in this world and all the things that are going on in your life and in my life and the ones that have been mentioned tonight, how wonderful it is to know that we're not alone in this world, but the Lord who created the heaven and the earth, who is great and his greatness is unsearchable and greatly is he to be praised. This is the one who is our shepherd tonight that we look to for every single thing that we stand in need of. This shepherd is not just any kind of shepherd. He's a good shepherd. The Bible tells us that in the Gospel of John, and I know this is familiar ground to you all, but I hope you'll just go right with me and enjoy it as much as you, you have the first time you ever heard it, the, that the good shepherd and who he is and what all that means for us tonight, the shepherd that we have, though he, he has all power, he, he has all knowledge, he's omnipotent, he's omniscient, and he's omnipresent. That's the one who is our shepherd tonight. That's the one who I need tonight in order to be able to feed the little lambs and sheep that have gathered here. Uh, it is the one that you need tonight. Listen, if uh, the only one that shows up tonight in a way of preaching is me, y'all going to be mighty, mighty empty. And there won't be anything that'll help you. Well, I've seen the Lord do this so many times. Take a little brother who feels to be the least among the brethren and feel like he's so empty and lift him up to preach in power and in demonstration of the Spirit so that it meets the individual needs of the congregation. And he supplies things that each one of them stood in need of. Uh, and he did it in such a way that they may even feel he knew all about them, but the brother didn't really have a clue. He just simply laid out what the Lord gave him. Because tonight we've got an all-knowing, all-powerful shepherd who is not only the good shepherd, but he's also the chief shepherd who has given us under shepherds 
who are to lead, to teach and to feed his little lambs and his sheep. And he called them to do it. And he's there to do it because they love him and they love the brethren and they, they look to the Lord and then the Lord blesses them to feed them and direct them. We've got a gentle shepherd that leads us. Y'all believe that tonight, don't you? We, that we have one who knows what we stand in need of. And that's why Brother Gene prayed and asked the Lord to bless us because we recognize all is vain tonight unless the Spirit of the Holy One comes down. But if the Spirit of the Holy One comes down, the preacher may get real loud, but he may be real soft, but it won't matter because the Lord will carry the things that he says to your heart and it'll be meaningful to you, and it'll be that which gives honor and glory to the Lord. It is be, it'll be beautiful upon the mountains or the feet of them that bring glad tidings of good things that say unto Zion, and that's what we want to say tonight. Our God reigns. <laughs> Listen, he's the King of kings, and he's the Lord of lords, and he's the good shepherd. He says in verse 10 in John chapter 10, after laying out here uh, that parable of the sheepfold and the, and the good shepherd of the sheep, he says to them, he says, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. And he says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. We have the good shepherd that knew his sheep. He says in the 14th verse, he says, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep and have known of mine. You know, you really could have said, I am the good shepherd, and I love my sheep. <laughs> I love my sheep because this knowing is the knowing that he foreknew his people with. He didn't just, uh, in the sense of knowing, he knew everybody. He knew every man, every boy, every girl, everybody who's ever, every woman who ever walked upon the face of the earth. But in the sense that he knows these, he says, these are my sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep. These are the sheep that the father gave him. These are the sheep that he loved in covenant before the foundation of the world. These are the sheep that were astray, that needed help and needed uh, one to come for them. These are the sheep uh, that would be lost and undone had he not helped them. Uh, but he came that they might have life. And the reason that he came is because he loved them. And he loved them and he knew them. He did. He's not loving everybody, hoping and wondering if anybody's going to be a sheep. He knows his sheep. He knows them by name. He knows where they are. He knows their great need. He knows where I am. He knows where you are. He knows his people. And he said here, and I, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known of mine. That means he comes to us and makes us aware of him. And this knowledge isn't a, a knowledge where you and I get to know everything in a gospel sense because some of his sheep don't know him uh, as clearly and as plainly in a gospel sense, but there is a sense in which every one of them know him. And that is he comes to them in regeneration and in the new birth, and they are effectually called. I believe that everyone that God foreknew will, are predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son and every one of them, and that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Listen, he's the chief shepherd. He's the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd. He, he's the shepherd who is able to do uh, whatsoever the Father has sent him to do. He's able. All power was given unto him. And he had a love for his people, and every one of them that he loved, he loved with an everlasting and an unconditional love, and they're out of every nation, out of every kindred, out of every tongue, out of every people, and there's nothing that will separate them from his love, and he comes to them in that love, and he quickens them, and he makes them alive, and he gives them a hunger and a thirst and a desire. Even tonight, if you have a desire to be here to worship the Lord, it's an evidence that he had this love for you, my brother, for you, my sister, even before the foundation of the world. Now, many men would say, well, he loves everybody, and he's trying to save everybody, 
And there are many that won't listen to him, won't follow after him, won't do what he would have them to do. And because they won't do what he would have them to do, he can't do any more for them. He's done all he can do. I want you to know that the Bible tells us of a God who is able uh, to do his will among the army of heaven and the inhabitants of the earth, and there's none that can stay his hand. The Bible tells us, uh, know ye that the Lord, this is the Lord who is my shepherd in Psalm 100, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the reason we're his people is because of his choice. Not our choice for him, but his choice of us. We are his people and we are the sheep of his pasture. And he tells us here that he knows his sheep. He didn't say he didn't know who his sheep would be. He knows his sheep and he says, and his sheep know him, which means every one of his sheep will be effectually called and they will hear the voice of the son of God and the hour, is, the, the, the hour cometh and now is when the dead shall hear, and this is the only place you'll hear uh, anything about the dead hearing anything. It didn't say the dead's going to hear the voice of the preacher. It didn't say the dead's going to hear the voice of mama or the voice of daddy. It says the dead shall hear the voice of the son of God. I'm glad he calls his people, aren't you? Because if you and I were left up to do that, I've known some men, and I've been in that place myself uh, where I haven't done uh, what the Lord had asked me to do, and it's a possibility that if it had been left up to me, uh, one or two or three or many of God's little children uh, surely would have been left out uh, because either I was unfaithful or I was unable. I didn't have the ability. I didn't have the will. I didn't have what was necessary. God didn't give it to me. He didn't give it to you. He gave it to one who could not fail, and that was his own darling son. That's the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And that's the great shepherd, the chief shepherd, and the good shepherd of the sheep, the bishop of our soul. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's who he put it in the hands of. Little child of grace tonight, our salvation isn't in the hands of our Savior and us. Our, our salvation is in the hands of a Savior who completely saves, who, who is the deliverer, who has delivered us from, uh, from, the, uh, from the sentence of death and the answer of death. That's what we had in ourselves. And if any part of this uh, eternal salvation had been left up for me or you to finish out, uh, not only what might we have fallen short in it, I'm saying to you, there would have been none who were saved because all of us have what? Sin and come short of the glory of God. Isaiah 53 says, all we like sheep have gone astray. The good news that he laid upon him the iniquity of us all. And there at Calvary, because of the love of the Father and the love of the Son, and the love of the Holy Spirit, not three gods, but one God manifest in three distinct persons, one God who carried out and brought about our salvation, one Lord, one Savior, uh, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, uh, the sovereign God, the one that uh, did not try to save, uh, but the one who came to save his people from their sins. He knew who we were. He knew where we were. He knew how deep we were in the, in the depths of depravity, and he had the depth of love to reach us in that lowest point, and he had the ability to carry us uh, to the glorious place even tonight. Oh, where we are tonight is a wonderful place where two or three are gathered together to worship the Lord. Uh, it's a heavenly place. It's not heaven, but I'm telling you, it's the closest thing to heaven uh, that you'll get here in this world. Uh, that's why we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but we were to, we are to present our bodies, a living sacrifice, and he's made us that. If you're alive tonight, you didn't make yourself alive. We can't do that. He's the life giver. I can't preach life to the dead. Uh, we can only preach to the living, but we've got a God who gives life to his children. And then he blesses ministers. 
to come and preach the wonderful truth that helps to restore their soul, to feed them the bread and to feed them the green grass and to, and to, and to supply unto them uh, the, the waters. Uh, he supplies it. It all flows out of heaven, uh, but he gives it to us that we might share it with one another. And oh, is there a better place to be uh, than the gathering of God's little children in the flock uh, where we sit down and we feed from the green pastures and the still waters provide, provided for, by this great shepherd of the sheep. He says, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep. And am known in my and and am known of mine. He says, as the Father knoweth me, even so I the Father. And you can right here again say, as the Father has loved me, I love him, and as I loved, and even and that love has has come down to us as his little children, not because I was deserving it, while I was yet a sinner. While I was, he died for the ungodly. Uh, while I was pulling away, when I when I had no thoughts of him. Uh, listen, if the grace of God that bringeth salvation had not appeared unto us. Uh, we would have never denied ungodliness. Uh, we would have never denied worldly lusts. Uh, we would never uh, desire to walk uh, before him or in, in soberly and righteously uh, in a way that pleases him. Uh, we wouldn't know anything uh, tonight, but because of what he has done, you have a hunger and a thirst. And that hunger and the thirst will not be satisfied by the things of this world. Uh, sheep need cheap food. Uh, God's little children who've been made alive need to have the nourishment that comes. They need to have the, the, the bread uh, that it, it comes from the bread of life. Uh, they need to have the water that comes uh, from our Lord and Savior, who is the fountain of living waters. We need this nourishment that comes in the, in the message of the gospel. Uh, we need to hear it again and again and feed on it again. And remember every time, if you're in a meeting and the preaching is good, it comes from the great shepherd of the sheep. It may come through an under shepherd and does come through an under shepherd, but I'm telling you, it's the sheep, the chief shepherd that deserves every bit of the honor and the praise and the glory. That's what I find among the old Baptists that, I, that, I, that I've loved from the very first time I said among them that the glory and the honor and the praise, uh, because it was all due unto him, goes unto him, to God be the glory. He says, as the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Now, who did he lay down his life for? Did he lay it down for everybody and hopes to get somebody? No. He knew who they were. He loved them. He came for them. It was for them that he died. We call this particular redemption. We call this uh, a limited, if you will, atonement. But in one sense, it's not, it's limited. It might be in mind, man's mind some limited, but I'm telling you what it covers. It covers every little air promise and innumerable company out of every nation, out of every kindred, out of every tongue, and out of every people. Uh, some of them never see the light of day and die in a mother's womb. Uh, some of them live to a ripe old age and live an ungodly life, maybe down to the very last moments, uh, but at one, some point in their life, between conception when life begins and death when the spirit and soul leave the body, every one of them are effectually called by the Holy Spirit, and they hear the voice of the Son of God, and they know him in the sense of John 10. They know him in regeneration. And he won't miss a one. He won't miss a one whether 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 the evangelist goes anywhere, whether the preacher preaches or anyone else. Now, should should preachers preach? Absolutely. Should they go teach God's little children? Absolutely. Is there a, is there a purpose in preaching and sharing the gospel in places where it's never been and do the work of an evangelist? Absolutely. Do ministers uh, are they duty bound to study to show yourselves approved unto God, workmen that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so someone would say, well, if it's not to bring the dead to life, uh, what is it to do? It brings life and immortality to light. That's what it does. It causes a little child of God to feel like a little child of God, to act like a little child of God, to talk like a little child of God, because they learn how it is they ought to walk and live and behave in this world. Uh, they learn and, and they're taught because they have a hunger in them 
and a desire to walk soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. And where does that come from? <laughs> it doesn't come out of it doesn't come out of mom and daddy teaching as much as mom and daddy might try to teach this. Listen, we're to bring up our children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. That's a responsibility. But it takes God to born again a, a, a little child of God. You're not an old Baptist tonight because your mama and your daddy were, though that's a, been a great blessing to so many. Uh, I've heard of those uh, who had a family, uh, kind of a family tree of old Baptists where they, they go back to the parents and the grandparents and the great-grandparents. I wasn't blessed necessarily with that in my life, uh, but I'll tell you what, I'm thankful of, of that our salvation doesn't come through that lineage or uh, through the natural line. It comes through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know who gets missed in that? Not a single one of his children. All that the Father giveth me, does he not say, shall come to me. He says that in, in John chapter 6 and verse 37. He says, all that the Father giveth uh, me shall come to me. And that's the sheep. Listen, that's the sheep. The sheep that are given him, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out, for I came down. Now, how are they coming? They're coming in regeneration. They're coming in the effectual calling. They're coming in the new birth. They're coming in that they're going to be born again. Uh, every one of them will be born again. They'll be made new creatures where old things pass away, and behold, all things have become new. That's going to happen for every little child of grace, just as sure as every one of them that were foreknown or predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that they might be the firstborn among many brethren. Every one of those whom he predestinated them, he also called. And that's the effectual call that comes in hearing the voice of the son of God. Tonight is old Baptist, we sit back and we rejoice in that doctrine because we've heard it so many times. But you know, there are multiplied millions of God's little children, I believe, in this world uh, that, that feel like they have something to do with that calling, uh, that they had something to do in either, either answering that call or making that call to someone else. And rather than trusting in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, they're trusting to some degree in their own ability, and they simply do not have the peace that you and I are blessed tonight if you're resting in the finished work of Christ. What are you trusting in tonight? My hope is built, like the hymn writer said, in nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness, and I pray that the Lord will cause us to see that every single time that we meet so that we be we might. And someone would say, well, doesn't that lead you to a licentious lifestyle or ungodly living? No, this, this is the gospel that leads you to godliness. Uh, this is the gospel that we heard last week, uh, that, that, we're to, uh, that our conversation might become the gospel, that we might put on uh, these truths and to walk in them, not because not in order to become his children, but because we are his little sheep. Little sheep ought not look like goats. They ought not act like goats. They ought not behave like goats. They are sheep. They ought, they ought to look like sheep. They, Brother Stan said what one told me one time, he, he, if you're going to be a shepherd, you even got to like the smell of sheep. <laughs> because they have a they have a there's a peculiar thing about God's little children. They need a shepherd, and they need under shepherds. If they didn't need under shepherds, the Lord wouldn't call men to preach the gospel, but they need under shepherds. Uh, but the under shepherds need the chief shepherd, and I'm so thankful tonight we have a chief shepherd. <laughs> we have one uh, who... Uh, who will have, he's the, he's the alpha, he's the omega, he's the first and the last, he's the first great cause and the last great end. Yeah, he's the one to whom we're looking tonight. He says, as the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I laid down my life for the sheep. And you know, because he laid down his life for the sheep, all of the sheep are going to be okay, uh, because the Father who loved them will not lose them. He won't leave one of them uh, astray. He will bring them all home. Uh, we read over in the Hebrew letter, uh, quoting from the Old Testament, Behold, I and the children that thou hast given me, uh, every one of them are going to be there. 
there uh, when the Lord presents them uh, as, as the Savior of his people. And, and when we stand there in the last day, we won't stand alone. Oh, oh wouldn't it be a frightful thing to think we were going to die and have to stand in the judgment alone? No, uh, we're going to have the word said, come ye blessed of my father and heard the kingdom uh, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And the reason we'll hear that is because he loved us enough to lay down his life for the sheep. He gave his life. He paid the sin debt. The price had to be paid. The price we owed had to be paid. He didn't just pay it so we might have an escape. He paid it in full. He paid for my sin of doubt, for my sin of unbelief, for my sin of failing to do what he would have me to do. And if any one sin that I'd ever committed would ever come up not paid for by him and paid in full, I would be cast away from him and rightfully so. And that gives me peace tonight because my hope is in him and in what he's done for me. He said here, speaking of the Gentiles, they had preached primarily to the Jews. And here uh, he says, and other sheep I have. He has sheep among the Jews. He has sheep among the Gentiles. He has the sheep among every nation, every kindred, out of every tongue. He, he brings them out of the east and from the west and from the north and the south. And he leads them in the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. He gives us a little city here in this world, in the church. Uh, he allows us to have some earnest of our inheritance right now while we're living here in time. That's why the church and the fellowship of the brethren is the sweetest thing that you're going to have on this side of the grave. I'm telling you, it's a little earnest of what heaven's going to be. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But one day we're going to be with him body, soul, and spirit. And we're going to be made and fashioned just like him. <laughs> and we'll praise him forevermore. And every one of his children will be there in his presence because of what he did for them. He says, other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one foal and one shepherd. Going back over to John 6, he said, For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing. I believe that means he won't lose any part of them. I don't believe he's going to lose their soul. I don't believe he's going to lose their spirit. And I don't believe he's going to lose their body. It says here, and this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he had given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. That means this body that's sown in the earth, this body that goes to sleep for a little while, when the sheep, when the great shepherd of the sheep returns, when the chief shepherd returns, when he comes uh, back, uh, he who is seated on the right hand of the Father, when he he who ascended, when he comes again, uh, there's going to be the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead, that is those who are asleep in Jesus, uh, shall rise. Uh, the dead shall come forth from the graves, and they which uh, they which are alive and remain, that's some sheep that did not go by the way of death, uh, they'll be changed in a moment and a twinkling of an eye. It doesn't take our Savior long to do it. <laughs> and I'm telling you, he's going to, in a moment and the twinkling of an eye, and we'll be made passion like unto him. And at that time, this old vile body, that you and I battle with right now, even here in this world, is going to be made. The Apostle Paul said, my vile body is going to be fashioned like unto his glorious body. And oh, when he shall appear, then we shall appear with him. It's just all over the place and all many places in God's word uh, that when he comes, uh, he will not come alone, but uh, but he'll uh, his children will come with him and the soul and the spirit and the body is going to be reunited and they're going to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And you know how sure that is? Just as sure as Jesus went to the grave and just as sure as he died on the cross, just as sure as every one of the sins of his people were placed upon him, just as sure as that price was paid at Calvary and he cried out it is finished, just as sure on that third revolving morning that he came forth to the grave of victorious, 
just as sure as he ascended back to the Father, and just as sure tonight that he's seated on the right hand of the Father making intercession for us so that when we pray, our prayers are heard. We pray to the great shepherd, the gentle shepherd, the loving shepherd, the chief shepherd, the bishop and shepherd and bishop of our souls, just that sure. Not one of his children are going to be lost. Not one of them, not one of his children that he died for. He says, and this, he says, and this is the Father's will which he sent me, that of all which he had given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. There's a blessing, listen. In believing in him, there is a life that we enjoy, a peace and a rest that you have in believing in him. Your believing in him doesn't make you his child. His choice of you makes you his child. But your believing in him you know, gives you, a, as you believe in him, uh, you, you have the evidence. In other words, you begin to see it. You begin to feel it. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to believe that the Lord is a shepherd, but isn't it even sweeter tonight to say the Lord, as David said, the Lord is my shepherd. David says, I believe he's my shepherd. I believe he got it for me. I believe his people that is among his people. I feel his love for me. I feel and and and, and have uh, I have heard his voice. I want to walk with him and I want to talk with him and I want to tell him that I am his own. I am my beloved. Uh, the song of Solomon tells us, I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. I'm telling you what, if we didn't belong to him, we would never be able to say my beloved is mine, but isn't it good tonight? I'm telling you, it's good for me tonight to say my beloved is mine. As I came here to speak to this congregation, I wanted to remember my beloved is mine. And he promised me that as he told me to go feed my lambs and feed my sheep, uh, that he would give us the ability to do that. And every God called minister ought to be trusting in him. Uh, the hirelings are not going to trust in him. The thief and the robbers are not going to trust in him. Uh, but his little ministers that are called uh, by the gospel need to trust in him and say, the Lord is my shepherd and he'll help me to do whatever he calls me to do. He'll lead me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And as I walk in that path, uh, he'll lighten that path and he'll open the doors uh, that need to be do open and he'll shut the doors that need to be shut. And that's true for a gospel minister, but it's true for a little sister in the church too. Listen, I don't know what's in front of you, but I know it's too big for you. It's too big for me, but it's not too big for our Savior. And he's shown us that he loved us so much uh, that he died for us. And he who gave his own son, how shall he not freely give unto us all things? What does that mean? That means that we're living here in this world, that which we stand in need of spiritually. And he's promised over in Matthew 6, even our natural needs as we're living here. One of my wife's favorite hymns is. And I can't remember the name of it. Right? Uh, oh, boy, I'm going to be in trouble. It's about trusting in the Lord and leaning upon the Lord and, and just casting your cares upon him. And he's the one who will supply just what you need. It's 157, I believe, in the old books and 151 in the new books. I can't get the title for the life of me, but that's okay. It's all right. What it's saying is when we, there you go. What is it there, brother? Our father cares. Here our heavenly father cares. He, he meets our needs before we ask. He gives us those things that we need in life's, in life's way. Listen, he cared enough to die for us, to secure heaven and immortal glory for us. He cares enough for us that when we need clothing, he gives us the clothing that we need. He's the one uh, who clothes the lilies. Boy, you ever look at a lily and see how good he clothes it? He closed it on the outside. You can tear that thing open and look all the way down to the depth of it. One thing I've seen about that, it gets prettier the deeper that you dig into it. They say you can even, you know, and you do, you take a magnifying glass or a telescope or a microscope and you look at it very close and in detail, it's still just as pretty. I'm telling you, God doesn't, he doesn't make junk. No, sir. 
Uh, he, he's, he's the God who's made this world. Oh, it's beautiful. What a, what a blessing it is. And those that are hungry, we seek first what? The kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And that's the God we look to tonight. He's the great shepherd of the sheep. He says in John chapter 10, just a few verses over in verse 25, it says, or in verse 27, he says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father, which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Does that sound like a weak God to you or a powerful God? I'm telling you, that's a powerful God uh, that we can simply say how great they are and how great and how powerful our mighty Lord is. Back over to Psalm 23, he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That means for anything uh, spiritually, for anything naturally, we have all that we need in him. We'll not come short. He has supplied our needs, and, and it's because of his great love wherewith he has loved us. He says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Uh, he supplies what we need spiritually. He, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Oh, that's where God leads us, in the right way. And he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Even when we come to that very last hour and we're about to leave this world, and the closer we get to that, sometimes that can that can cause someone to say, oh, is it, how is it going to be when it comes my time to leave this world? I'm telling you, the same shepherd that has taken care of you all the days of your life will be there in those very last hours. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you and I can trust in him, and we do not have to fear any evil. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. And has his rod not uh, directed you in your life and been with you along the way? And has his staff not pulled you back from places that you've been going and would have gone and things that you would have done? Has not his hand providentially been upon your life and taken care of you? Listen, dear friend, friends, that one who has been with you through all of the storms of life, when you come down to that last and final hour, uh, he is the light at the river. He is that friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Uh, he's the one that's going to carry us out of this old troubled world to be with him in glory so that we can even say with the hymn writer, farewell vain world, I'm coming, I'm coming home, my, I'm going home, my Savior bids me come. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I can fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. We got a world right now that we, that's the enemy of the little child of grace. That's the enemy of God and the enemy of the Lord Jesus Christ and the enemy of the Lord's people. They hate uh, you because they hate him. They hate us because they hated him. And we have enemies that would love to just destroy uh, every little old Baptist church, wherever it is, uh, and would like to wipe it off of the face of the earth. Uh, but I'm telling you, he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And he's provided for us a table, even in the presence of our enemies. And I'm, he's going to keep it here for us. And he says, thou anointest my head with oil. Have you not had the oil of gladness on your head? I'll just roll off your head. And, and like one little brother said many years ago, I'm drinking from the salsa because my cup is overflowed. And in other words, I have been I'm so filled with the goodness and the mercy of the Lord. I just, I, it's, it's just like I, I talked to a brother this week. Uh, who said he was just, uh, we were just talking along about, as, and he was driving along and we were on the phone and we were just talking away. Uh, and he said he just wanted to pull off the road and, and roll his window down to somebody and just tell them how good the Lord had been to him because of uh, the blessings and the mercies of the Lord. I, I told him, it sounds like your cup had overflowed. 
my cup had overflowed. I, I pray that we'll have more meetings where our cup overflows. Listen, we need those meetings. I've been in some meetings in times past where the cup has been, where my cup was filled and overflowing, and I left there. I went in feeling very low and left feeling like a, oh, I tell you, I just didn't want to break. I didn't want to leave. Sometimes so much so I couldn't even speak, couldn't even talk. And I pray that the good Lord would continue. And, and I'm telling you, I've had those recently. Listen, God isn't done with us. Isn't it good to know that we're not just talking about things of the past? I believe we've had that right here over and over again. We've been, we've been in the presence of the Lord. The shepherd has not changed. His word has not changed. He's still blessing his under shepherds. He's still blessing his little lambs and his little sheep. He's still filling our cup. Uh, our, he's, he's still anointing his children with all of gladness and the all of joy. The Holy Spirit is still operating and giving us those things that we need. And he said, surely. Truly, goodness, God's grace, and his mercy, which is everlasting, shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I believe today we're gathered in a portion of the house of the Lord. I believe we're gathered. This is the, the church of the living God. This is the pillar and ground of the truth. And, and this is a, a little he, this is a little heavenly place. I believe it's one of those mansions the Lord has allowed us to have. Uh, but I'm telling you, there's a time coming when all that we've enjoyed at its very best will just be dim in comparison to the brightness of his glory and that heavenly place that he's prepared for those. And just as sure as he prepared a place for us, uh, he'll come again and receive us unto, our, unto himself that where he is, we shall be also. What a day that's going to be. These church meetings have been a blessing, but oh, when we get home to glory, <laughs> as the hymn writer says, oh, and I can just agree with it, how beautiful heaven must be. And to see him face to face, oh, what, what it must be to be there. When you have a mind to pray, remember me, please, and God bless you, and I appreciate your kind attention. Amen. Lord, richly blessed your brother Gary. We're thankful to hear about our good, uh, my good shepherd, uh, your good shepherd, the good shepherd. And there's only one good shepherd. There's only one good shepherd because there only needed to be one good shepherd. Because our chief shepherd supplied all that we should need. Therefore, we want for nothing. <laughs> I appreciate that. I certainly needed to feel, uh, to hear that and to feel that. Uh, and to be lifted up uh, once more by the good news of the gospel, turning our minds and hearts and souls to our good shepherd. Amen, Brother Gary. God bless you. Um, we'd like to have a, a hymn as a way of closing here. And uh, Brother Kevin, what number do you have? Brother Andy, we've turned to Jesus Paid It All. It's number 140. And 136 in the 12th edition. 140 and 136. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength and deed is long. Child of weakness, watch and pray.
Amen. Thank God for the good shepherd. Uh, we're thankful once again for our time together this evening. Uh, we're thankful that we got to hear about Jesus Christ once more. Uh, God bless you, Brother Gary. Um, we hope and trust the Lord would continue to bless us uh, in our upcoming meetings. We hope and trust wherever you would meet this weekend that you would just feel the, the moving and the power of the Holy Spirit. Be in prayer for that. Uh, be in prayer for that. Come, uh, um, you know, we mentioned, uh, I think, Sunday uh, in the book of Acts in that uh, 17th chapter where it was talking about the Bereans. It said they came with readiness of mind. So we hope and trust that uh, wherever you would meet, that you would come with readiness of mind, that it would be a continual thought on your, in your heart that you would be able to assemble yourselves and worship God. Does anyone have any announcements? No announcements, please? Yes. We will be meeting on, and on Saturday on our Zoom. We'd love to have any and all that could be with us there. Bethel Washington's number's there. Thank you, Brother Gary. We're going to ask Brother Don if he'd dismiss us with a prayer. God bless you, Brother Don. Good to see you this evening. Good to see you, Brother Eddie. Before I uh, to make that attempt, I'd just like to say I've what Brother Gary preached here tonight. I've heard preached hundreds of times in 45 years. The same thing. But every time you hear it, it gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. And I thoroughly enjoyed his blessing the night that the Lord gave him and the preaching that he, he was blessed. Let's just to preach for us here this night. Thank him for everything. Let's look to him and be dismissed. Heavenly Father, we thank the old and gracious Heavenly Father, our great commander, our love, our, our love of our life, all that we have and all that we wish to have. We all have to give thee thanks for everything, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all the good things in this life. Thank you, dear Lord, for blessing Brother Gary here this night to preach the wonderful gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you've shown us, for our brother, our brotherhood with each other, our fellowship with each other, and how we love one another. Lord, we know it only can come down from thee that we're not capable of such love. But no, we know that all perfect and good things come down from thee. So Lord, let, it, let hope we are all thankful for that. We keep us, Lord, in the way that we should go and forgive us our sins and our, our wrongs. And bless the sick and the afflicted. Bless all the little churches everywhere, Lord, and all thy people. Lead us, guide us, and keep us in thy precious name, we pray, dear Heavenly Father. In the name of thy darling Son, and amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Don. Uh, we're thankful for all the prayers that's been offered up on behalf of this service. I believe that the Lord uh, has heard the prayers and has, uh, has answered the prayers uh, that we could be fed once again uh, by the good news of the gospel. So uh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I look forward to seeing each one of you again. Wonderful here tonight. I love all you brothers and sisters. Love you too, Brother Don. Love you, Brother Don. Thank, Thank you all. Good, Good to see you, Sister Gail. God bless you. Good to see you. You take care. You too, honey. God bless all. We enjoyed that sermon, Brother Gary. I appreciate your help, Brother Caleb. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you. Enjoyed, enjoyed being here so much. Love you all. Love you too. Take care. Bless you. Thank the Lord. Any good thing. Give him the praise. Yeah. Enjoyed the singing, bro, Kevin. Amen. So, so sorry for God bless. Sorry for accidentally this. Cut your video off there at the beginning. I was trying to hit the chat and it, it cut your video off. I didn't know I didn't notice anything. No. All right. Yeah. It's good to see all y'all have a good this is Sister Judy signing off. This has been a blessed, sweet, lovely meeting that the Lord has just poured his blessings out on. And he surely poured his blessings out on Brother Gary. Oh, I enjoyed that so much, the singing. Oh, it was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank y'all.
so much. Love y'all. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye, sister. Goodbye, everybody. We love y'all. Bye. Love you. Y'all have a good night. Bye.